everyone. My name is Anton Mosgovoy. Uh, I'm the CTO of Humanique, and uh, I've been working on this project for more than half a year now. Um, started back in 2011 working on the microcontrollers in the assembly language. After that, I switched to uh, working in different banks, working on the mainframe, especially in the transaction engines. Uh, after that, in 2014, I started working with the Bank of Canada, the National Bank of Canada, working on the, the very first blockchain uh, project that was a national wide project trying to switch the blockchain architecture to and apply it to the financial system of Canada. Um, and I also founded one of the startups called Finlit. We were doing algorithmic uh, credit scoring. Um, so it was the preventative credit scoring that, that was uh, being applied to can Canadian and US citizens. Uh, after that in 2017 I started working at Humanique uh, and that's when where the entire history starts. <laughs> Right, so Humanique app, uh, it's a financial application which has an inbuilt social uh, tools, which is chatting in the manager, and it's built again on the blockchain. So starting from the registration authentication perspective, we have inbuilt biometric uh, identification, which is for the security and for the KYC processes, uh, which, is, which stands for know your customer. Uh, we also have Messenger, which is again a huge and a social part that's a core part of Humanic uh, application. However, on the other side, we also have the inbuilt wallet, which uh, allows you again to accept, uh, transfer, and receive transactions um, to any person on the planet. So Humanique application, um, we are only at the very beginning of our path uh, and there's way more functionality that we're actually bringing in and onboarding. So starting the huge changes are gonna be happening uh, in recent months, that's when we're gonna be rolling out our bot platform. Uh, so the bot platform is going to be, um, again, is going to start being a huge part of Humanique application as it's going to be onboarded with uh, different dApps, so-called decentralized applications. So we're going to onboard the marketplaces, the job marketplaces, different insurances, loans, again, credit scoring for the loans. So all of that, so we're trying to bring in the decentralized um, Humanique uh, network platform. <laughs> So um, it, is, it is a good question. So we are living in a world where uh, you are either a good startup or you're a dead startup. And in a sense that we're especially dealing with a very sensitive um, area, the financial area, uh, we have to behave smart, we have to work smart. And that's why the only way for us to succeed is that we have to be very quick um, without actually having lots of the mistakes on the side. So that's why we chose weekly iterations to see uh, how fast our progress goes uh, to see how we react to the, to the feedback from our customers and from the market. Uh, a very fast speed is only, is only the after part of the, the huge part of the chunk of the work that has been done. Um, so initially, before we started coding anything, uh, there are two things that have to be done. So number one is the high level architecture. Number two is again, we're going deep into the levels as to how the data modeling should work and how the application architecture should work. Um, so there's a lot of work being done on that, like on those two pieces before we started coding. So right now we have a solid base, the solid architecture of our platform, so our backend is very solid. So now we're actually just incrementing and we're increasing the speed of the development. Why? Because we are actually, uh, we, have, we have a solid base in the background. So let me start with uh, Humanique token, HMQ token is actually uh, an ERC-20 uh, contract token. So it's, a, it's a, just a general smart contract token. However, uh, the Ethereum protocol, in a sense, the way it, it is now, the way it works now, um, it, hasn't, um, it, hasn't, it doesn't suit our purpose, it doesn't suit our needs. That's why we had to upgrade and modify it, and that's why we have developed and designed our own hybrid system. Uh, which is a unique, um, which is a unique in a sense, is that we are actually making trans blockchain transactions uh, right now, and every country has its own private blockchain, which is interconnected and works in a one global decentralized uh, network. It is a huge problem for all of the for all of the startups um, that sacrifice the speed for, of the development versus, again, the, the easiest or the easiness of use. Um, we had this issue, again, from the very beginning, but we had known about it. Uh, we were aware of it, and that's why, again, every single 
uh, every single thing, every single piece of action that we have been performing, uh, it actually was leading us to our hybrid system, which solves the question why, because again, it's, it's a combination of the private blockchains, the public Ethereum mainnet, and also the side chains. So that huge platform allows us to actually mitigate the, and neglect um, all, of the, mm, all of the differences or difficulties of the Ethereum protocol. Uh, it, is, it is true, and what we've been seeing is that for the Web uh, 3.0 protocol, many messengers start being uh, not just decentralized or not just P2P encrypted, but they also start being, um, they also start being again, in a sense, uh, decentralized without having a single point of um, you know, fault entry. It means that we're trying to build our messenger based on Ethereum sub-protocol. It means that all of the information, so the entire texting, data, filing, it actually doesn't go through our servers. So we're trying to uh, have the uh, humanique, uh, in a sense there, not just a single point of fault, not just a centralized server operating on behalf of the users, but just being, again, a part of the ecosystem. So uh, having the same rights and having the same duties as just any, any other party. Yes, so um, it, it's, it's a, very, uh, it's a very, very deep question and in a sense it's a, it's a, a bit more uh, beyond uh, as to the global vision and a bit of philosophy in here. Uh, the point is, is that many people uh, currently do not possess uh, the, the regular type of the identification, so they do not have any legal documentation. So when we involve the biometrics and the KYC process, we're creating this instance of people having uh, a legal proof of their existence. It may sound ridiculous, but uh, in the legal sense, if there is no proof that you are existing, you actually can possess any, any legal documentation. And Humanique is trying to have that problem. Besides, besides the security part, as you know, the biometrics actually allows us to identify uh, the person uniquely and uh, very precisely and in a sense that the part of security but it's also the legal that part is being involved there and it's a long-term plan and goals that we have. Um, yeah, so we, again, because Humanique is a, is a very new startup and we have limited resources. That's why the smartest and the only viable solution um, there was to partner with, um, with, with different companies out there already in the market. Uh, so we have a couple of partners for the bio uh, for the bio identification, and uh, those partners are helping us on our way in our global mission. As you know, Humanique is actually uh, well has quite a few challenges uh, on the way. So the number one is our targeted audience, especially the quality of the internet and the traffic and uh, the size of the you know the bandwidth of the channel that we're working with. Um, it's also again the color of the skin. Uh, which in a sense is, is a bit difficult uh, due to the lightning issues, especially the surroundings. Uh, and lastly, again, what we're dealing is that we're not trying just to identify people, but we're trying to verify whether they are who they are. And in a sense, there wasn't a solution in the market that was suiting us. That's why uh, our partners and, and ourselves, we were working on the unique solution um, and uh, our, um, our proudness, and we are very proud of uh, the emotion intelligence that we have. Uh, in a sense that we are able to identify the emotion of the person and we are using that to um, have a unique um, way of identifying the people uh, in a sense that they're not able to prepare for what emotion is coming in. So we're, we're asking them to perform the random emotion and that guarantees that we're actually seen and behaving as a live person on the platform. So that every person on the human platform is KYC'd, and is actually protected from everybody else. So as I said, um, the challenges are still out there. So number one is that in a sense that um, right now, there is no facial recognition system uh, that will be able to identify from just a single picture, whether it is a picture of human face or if it is a human face. And that is a huge issue, especially as Humanique is trying to achieve, again, the verification process just from one image. Um, that's our main issue and goal. Number two is, again, is the quality of the incoming picture as, um, again, we're, we're working with Africa market and especially the internet bandwidth is very expensive. And that's why we're just trying to uh, make sure that we use as low data as possible. And number three is, again, is uh, there are so many different people in the descriptor 
which we build off identifying and recognizing the face. Uh, and it's, sometimes it is very hard to fulfill the full data when the lightning, right, so the surroundings uh, are very dark. And that's our main issue as to how do we uh, highlight and verify and identify a human face. So our targeted audience, Humanica, is targeting the, um, the unbanked people, so the unbanked and then the underbanked. And uh, those uh, users, well, number one is that mostly they live in the rural area or in the urban area, but they're, again, they're being excluded from the global market. And uh, we're talking about that the users, they don't have uh, extensive experience with the mobile applications. So they don't have extensive experience understanding um, the things that go beyond and underneath the user interface that they're facing. And that is why we have to make sure that everything we do is uh, simple, is intuitive, and is easy to use. And the unique challenges that we are actually uh, working on is again, so number one is the biggest one is also providing um, the point of entry to Humanique platform, which is mobile applications. As um, Humanique application is, is a mobile, it's, it's more than mobile bank. It's actually, again, it's a mobile banking platform. And that is why if you don't have a smartphone, if you don't have a smartphone with the internet, that's, that's the first, that's a false entry that, that you're already missing. So we're also working on that part. Yeah, so bot platform is, um, is something that we've been working for a while. It is still out there. Um, we're still, again, in the development process. But the bot platform will allow our users um, to use the chatting interface to connect and um, integrate and cooperate with different services and companies and parties. It means that if you are sitting at home and you actually want to, um, you want to have a decentralized uh, exchange market, or you want to have a decentralized uh, job marketplace, or you want to have a decentralized escrow, or legal services, that's something you can do through our application. And the reason why I'm actually mentioning and specifying decentralized is that we do not want to have um, centralized entries in our platform in a sense that it has to be uh, fully transparent, uh, full tolerant, and that's something that we're working towards. <laughs>